how to keep your lithium ion battery in tip top shape, the very best way to clean the outside of your MacBook Pro, and just what do we do with all the stuff that we've torn apart. I've got all of those answers and more on our very first Ask MJ episode. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and recently I asked you to submit your burning questions about self-repair or iFixit in general for a new segment we're doing called Ask MJ. We got a ton of responses, so many that we can't fit them all in just one episode, so I picked my favorite questions and we'll go ahead and tackle those now. I've got a lot to say, so let's just get started. The first question comes from Max from Canada. Max asks, Hey, this might sound stupid at first, but what's the best way to clean a MacBook Pro? Because everything seems to leave residue or spots on the aluminum. I figured out that isopropyl alcohol works best, but it still leaves some marks. I love this question because I often see people cleaning their computers or their electronics in general really haphazardly. And when you spend like a thousand dollars or even a few hundred dollars on something, why willfully destroy it? There are rules for this kind of thing and we'll talk about a couple of them. Here at iFixit, we use OmniCleans, which is basically a solution specifically designed for cleaning electronics. You can use it on the outside, on the screen, on the trackpad and the keyboard, even on your flat screen television at home. I've also heard that people will make a 50-50 solution of isopropyl alcohol and distilled water, and that works well too. I've also had problems with my stuff streaking when I'm cleaning it, and that's probably to do with the towel that I'm using. It's usually been used about a thousand times and has all the grime from previous cleaning still on it. So if you're really serious about not leaving streaks, you need to use a clean towel. And when I'm talking about towels, I don't mean like a bath towel that you wash yourself with. I mean one of those little microfiber cloths that you can clean eyeglasses with. They even sell them at like Staples, I think. The reason you want to use those is because they don't have any rough fibers, so after cleaning something several times, you won't notice little fine scratches starting to develop. So in a nutshell, you want to use a cleaning solution and a clean cloth and lots of rubbing. Our next question comes from a viewer named Michael. Michael asks, I have read a variety of different facts and myths about preserving the lifespan of lithium ion batteries. Of course, most of our mobile devices, including the iPhone and iPad, use these batteries. What should people do to extend the life of their batteries? Should the battery die out completely? Should it only die out sometimes? Does any of this matter? Michael, I am so glad you asked this question because I've heard so many myths about battery preservation and I feel like it's about time for us all to get on the same page. A lot of what people think they know about battery preservation was accurate about a decade ago when most batteries in digital cameras and cell phones were nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium. The nickel-based batteries did have a lot of particular rules about how you're supposed to charge them and discharge them, but today's lithium-ion batteries don't have the same kind of rules. You don't have to format them or train them, and the whole thing about like charging it up for eight hours is actually pretty old school, and you can, you can ditch that knowledge about now. That all being said, there are a couple of basic rules that you can follow to keep your lithium-ion battery in the best condition possible. The first rule is to discharge it as much as possible, but not till it totally dies, at least once a month. It's important to keep the electrons moving around inside of it, and while it might feel right to leave it plugged in all the time, it's actually not good for the battery, and you do need to exercise it at least once a month. The second rule is to keep the battery cool. You want to keep air circulating around the battery as much as possible. So even though it's called a laptop, you probably don't want to use it on your lap, or even worse with like a pillow on your lap, because that prevents the air from flowing around it. You want to use probably one of those little laptop pads or like a cookie cooling rack if you have one at home. Heat is like the number one killer of a battery, so don't leave your laptop in your car on a hot day and try to keep the air circulating around it. If you're interested in the science behind battery depletion, you can go to batteryuniversity.com and they've got more information than you could ever want to know. On to our next question. Robert asks, being a viewer of almost all the iFixit videos, I always come across two huge questions. First of all, after your teardowns, do you put all the parts back together or do you just throw them away? If you do fix it up, do you get to keep it? My second question is, how the heck can iFixit afford to buy all this stuff? I wish I got to keep everything that I put back together. We definitely don't just throw things away when we're done with them. We keep stuff around either for testing our own parts on or for making repair guides for the devices. 
and we can afford to buy all this stuff because we're a business. And I don't mean to sound sarcastic when I say that, but a lot of people don't know that we actually sell repair parts and tools to people all over the world. It's actually part of our goal to teach everybody how to repair everything, and that's not possible if they don't have parts or tools. So that's how we make our money. Our last question is from a viewer named Martin. Martin says, I wanted to ask if you could do some video game console repairs. For example, the Xbox 360, PS3, and the Wii. I love your Apple videos, but could you do some console stuff as well? Love your videos, Martin. Well, Martin, we love you, and because we love you, we filmed a PlayStation 3 Yellow Light of Death repair video. I will put the link somewhere in this spot right here. Also, if you check out our YouTube channel, there is an Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death repair video as well. We haven't done any Wii videos yet, but if and when we do, I will absolutely let you know. That is all we have for our first official Ask MJ episode. Please email your questions to askmj at ifixit.com for a chance to get your question answered and to get some free stuff from us here at iFixit. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest teardowns and repair videos. And of course, if you do the Twitter thing, you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash ifixit. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.